All right, YouTube, welcome. We have another really cool show for you guys today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about the Sumapide, and that's something I've not shown officially on YouTube, haven't explained. But the really cool thing about this project is it gives us a chance to talk a little bit about the development of a project. And there probably has not been a project in my collection that's taken more time, more effort than this one. So let's talk about a little bit what goes into it. It's really, it's really pretty really cool how it all kind of works out in the end, no matter how hard it takes in the meantime. So the Sumapide project started back in 2010. That's when I started thinking about what's the best way to take it. There's this new gene called the mahogany. Um, the Suma had just been introduced. There was a couple Sumas in the world at that point, and it was an all black snake and it was amazing. At the same time, the panda pides had been made and they were really, really, really cool. People really liked them, but there had some difficulties with them too um, in the situation where a lot of those super cinnies and super black pastels were either having um, deformities in the egg or having pinched noses or you know slightly misshapen heads. And so it seemed like a really interesting opportunity to go the mahogany route for the panda pied type project. With going with the mahogany, you can make a super mahogany, a black and white snake. It just made sense, right? But back in 2010, this is all very, very new. So we just had a couple sumas on the market and pieds combos were nothing like they are today. We didn't have all the variety. So I started thinking, well, what's a cool way to take this suma, um, this mahogany pied stuff? So I went and I bred a mahogany to a pied. This is 2010. That clutch hatched the very first time mahogany male to pied female. That clutch hatched in 2011. Okay, so great, I'm on the road, right? Should get a bunch of mahogany het pieds, bring them together, yada yada. No. So I got three mahogany het pieds out of that clutch. All three were girls. So really, I was stuck without a pair to make my suma pied. So evaluating what the best route would be from there, you go into 2012, do I try the pairing again, try to make a boy? A boy? Um, if I got a pair of mahogany het pied boys, braid them together, my odds would be one in 16. So I thought, you know, as opposed to just going and repeating the same pairing, just trying to make more of the same thing, um, I wanna go just grow up those girls. So that's what I did next. I grew up those girls for three years, those mahogany hat pied girls. And it was a long wait. But when they finally got up to size, we put them into the pied project. I bred a dream sickle to one of them. And we finally got some mahogany double hat dream sickles. And I got a boy. So then we're on the route at that point. The next year I bred the mahogany double hat dream sickle to a pied and got a mahogany pied. So then I had a male, a visual male, as opposed to going to the one in 16, I had a visual mahogany pied male to run to the mahogany hat girls. Okay, so we're gonna fast forward all the way up now. We've covered a lot of years, slowly developing that project one at a time. Got to the point where we had a mahogany pied to three mahogany hats, and this was 2016, and we were ready. So I ran that boy through those three. I think my odds should be one and eight, not doing one and 16 anymore, one and eight, very reasonable. Plenty of clutches, nothing, no sumapied. In fact, it was so bad, the point of I should have, I was so sure that I should have had it by then that I was actually starting guessing whether or not the sumapied was anything like we thought it was. I had decided that probably these, some of these mahogany pies that I've been making, which are dark, dark um, brown and chocolate color, they were probably, they could possibly be sumapied, some of them could be, and maybe the pie was just changing it somehow so it didn't look the way I expected anymore. So, went back to it again in 2017, one at again, I'm gonna run at it one more time, three more clutches. So this time, first two clutches, same results, I got sumas, mahogany pieds, same thing I'd been getting, and then on my 56th egg from the project, 56 eggs, what should have been one in eight odds, I finally got the amazing suma pie that I'm gonna show you guys today. Um, and honestly, we're just, we're just getting started with that. We still have that whole dream sickle mahogany, dream sickle suma pie project going, and that could be potentially because of the extra odds that's involved with that. That's potentially another three, two or three, four years down the road again. But every year is about just changing those odds a little bit, narrowing it in, trying a different angle, trying to figure it out, and I'm really excited to be able to show you guys the results of all that work today. Okay, so here we have, we're just gonna start with basic and we're gonna show you all the progression up to the, the Suma Pied. So this is a mahogany het Pied and as you can see, 
it looks, you know, it's obviously a head um, because it's not visual pied, but it's a great example of mahogany. Mahoganies are dark kind of chocolatey snakes. They usually have a little bit of brown kind of chestnut blushing on the back um, of the head. And then they have these really cool like mahogany, it's a perfect you know, name, mahogany kind of colored flames coming up the sides. They also have usually fairly clear bellies. Of course, this one's het pied, so it uh, has a clear belly partly because of that as well. But that is kind of what we've been starting with. That's the, the basics to make the mahogany pied is you need a couple, at least mahogany heads in order to bring it. So and then when you breed two mahoganies together, you're gonna get a suma, which a suma is perfectly named because it is the super mahogany. A lot of people don't necessarily get the connection between the name and, the, and what it is. A suma is an all black snake or it's a very, very, very dark brown snake. And it's just amazing. Now, sometimes they have a little bit of a stripe along the back. You can see how this one's a little bit lighter brown on the back. And here's down stripe a little bit towards the tail. But a suma is an amazing, amazing snake, a, basically a, a true patternless ball python that is very, very close to black. And the great thing about them is that they don't seem to have any kind of genetic um, ill effects or defects whatsoever. They have perfect little faces. They are just absolutely perfect ball pythons, standard in every way, which is what we needed in order to take this project to the next level. All right, so these next two animals are mahogany pides. So this is just the single um, gene mahogany um, mixed with piebald. And the cool thing about it, one of the first things I noticed when I made a couple of mahogany pieds is that they have great pattern. That's always a fear with any kind of pied combo is some of the codoms will force the pied to be extremely high white. But mahogany is not one of those. We're so thankful for it. And they just turned out really, really, really amazing. You can see it brings that kind of that chestnut color um, from the mahogany. And a lot of them have some kind of weird shaped saddles. And this one wants to bite me. Some weird um, kind of colored saddles and mix, which you come down to see in pieds anyways, but a really good pattern distribution, which is really key to any pied project. Just, just worked out perfectly. And you can see the variation too among these. Sometimes I was getting mahogany pieds that turned out where they had saddles like this, pretty much in the whole snake, which were a lot darker than other mahogany pieds that come out with, you know, lighter colored saddles. So that actually had me thinking after I missed the odds again and again and again, I started thinking maybe these are Suma Pieds and the pied is just not allowing the pure black to express. Somehow it's um, combating it. Maybe what we're trying to accomplish was just not possible, at least not the way we thought it was. Um, but thankfully, towards the very, very end of the season, last clutch that I pretty much was going to do on them just the standard way without going at it at a different angle, we finally got... Here she is, egg number 56. It's almost karma that it was a girl. When I saw it, I was absolutely in disbelief, absolute disbelief that it even could be made at that point. And as soon as I um, sexed it, I just knew it was gonna be a girl. It just had to be, but beautiful. Just amazing and great pattern distribution. It has that patternless head of the, uh, the Suma. The, there's no kind of like pied markings or any kind of patterns here in the saddle except for that kind of that dark 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 brown of the suma um, the cool thing is is that this snake even after all these years i still don't think i'm done with it it's still not as black as a panda pie you know for all its advantages and all the, the cool parts about about it it can still be improved it can still be working on it we're going to do a lot of stuff to this i have several ideas um and and a lot of people have have kind of come into that that uh knowledge lately of there's ways to make the suma even darker and so we're going to be working on that and maybe we'll see in a few years a ways to even make this snake even more along the lines of what i initially envisioned but just so so thrilled so thrilled to be able to see seven years of work come to fruition when you see the little head come out literally disbelief i i, I honestly wasn't even paying that close attention to the clutch because i was that sure that there was no way to even make this snake. And, uh, and here she is. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I know this can be a short video, but I thought it'd be really cool to be able to show you guys this project and also give you a little window into what it takes 
to bring a snake from concept, something just exists only in your head, all the way to reality. And so in this situation, it was seven years of really, really hard work, constantly re-looking at the ways to do it, and then dealing with crazy odds. There's just so many factors in this business you, and, and hobby that you can't even really quantify. Um, like the fact that making three females to start, not getting a male, and then missing odds after odds after odds after odds to the point where you're not even sure the snake even exists, but they're finally getting there and getting that payoff. It's pretty amazing. And in the end, after all that work, that payoff snake, that sumapide, was a girl, of course. So I'm right back to the same odds again, trying over again. But it's way better now that I know. Now that I know what it looks like, it's, it's even that much more exciting. So I also want to mention a couple things. This shirt, this shirt is extremely rare now. We're not reprinting it. There's only like 20 left. Um, so I'm putting it on my website, I'm gonna put a link if you want one of the Follow Your Own Road shirts. Also, I'm gonna be at the NARBC Arlington show February, I think it's 16th and 17th. Um, I'm just gonna be there for a little bit, but I hope to see a few of you there. A couple things we're gonna be doing. I'm not gonna be vending, I'm not gonna have any snakes. I'm just gonna be checking out some of the other really cool breeders there and talking and hopefully meeting a few of you guys as well. We're also gonna do a Ask Justin video in conjunction with the show a little bit. So if you have a question in mind, you see me at the show, um, let's talk about it and maybe we can get it in the next video. Would love to do that. And I'm also excited to show a couple other breeder snakes and get them plug their own businesses and uh, share the love a little bit so you guys can meet some other really good, good people from this business. Thanks for watching YouTube. Like and subscribe. Have a good one.